David Wilson back here courtside. Danny O'Banion is with us, head women's basketball coach at Kent State. Uh, Danny, today very tough in the first half keeping up with some of their shooters. And they had some wide open looks and they did exactly what you would expect Division I players to do and that was to knock down those shots. Uh, what was going right for their offense that allowed them to free up some of those three-point shooters that they wanted to get open today? You have to give Toledo a lot of credit. They, uh, their kids made shots within their offense. They took advantage of opportunities that they had in transition. So a lot of it, uh, Dave, quite honestly, was our poor shot selection that they were able to turn into really nice transition points. I don't know that the stat guy would credit them as transition points, but we talk openly in our program about our shot selection. Taking a bad shot sometimes can be the equivalent as a, as a live ball turnover. Well, I know a couple of times you, you tried to take a timeout. You uh, tried to arrest that as it got started. Uh, there were, was it a situation where you just taking some shots too quickly that uh, they thought were good shots? Yeah, we took some quick shots tonight, and we mm -hmm. talked about that being really important. Our game plan was to go inside, and I thought CeCe had a tremendous game. Uh, when we got her touches, she made good on most of those, uh, and that's against a really quality post player in Jones for Toledo. So. We were, we were determined to get paint touches and paint points, and I thought we got away from that uh, after the second media timeout in the first half because it was hard. It was hard. You know, they're a very physical, well-coached team, and it was hard, and so we started taking some quick, low-percentage shots that they were able to turn into baskets. Well, you mentioned C.C. Shannon today, Danny, 19 points, a, a season high and a career high here at Kent State for her. Uh, she did not take a foul shot on Thursday night at Eastern Michigan today. Very aggressive inside. She went to the line 12 times, and that is always going to bode well for Kent State when she is getting to the line, right? Sure. CeCe had a great game. You could tell for every possession that CeCe was on the floor, she was dying to have a touch on the basketball, and that's the way CeCe can play, and we need her to play every night. She's a legitimate uh, top three or four post player in this league, and I think our home crowd got to see her do what we need her to do every night, and so we're excited about CeCe's development. Well, I know you guys were very excited about the way this team was going defensively, uh, and then today a little bit of a step back, but when you have a game like this and, and you know that you have been playing well against teams defensively, uh, how do you use this to try to get back on track? Well, there's no question. We'll get in the film room and talk candidly with our players about what our game plan was and what was executed on the floor, and that's, that's the same process every game. But you know, we do take great pride in the way we play on the, on the defensive end of the floor, and we just didn't do that very well today. But again, it, uh, it's harder to defend teams that have multiple scoring threats, and that's a very talented Toledo team that has found their shooting touch in the three-point line here as of late. Yeah, they're five and uh, five coming in, now six and five in the MAC, but if they continue to shoot like that and have those types of weapons, sure. uh, very versatile sure. offense, they're gonna be a tough matchup. Sure, they're a tough matchup. And you know, we were excited when we saw the conference schedule that we would have them here. I thought we had a really healthy and energetic crowd, and so we appreciate that support. Uh, but I think Toledo is, is going to uh, get hot in February and, and turn some things up down, upside down in the standings. Danny, a little wrinkle in the starting lineup today. You matched up Janae with CC uh, in the starting lineup. I thought that was very interesting. What uh, led to that? Well, you know, again, we, we, we preach the importance of how you practice uh, being a direct uh, reflection of how we can anticipate you playing. And Janae earned a spot today. And, that's been one of the keys to helping our practice environment be competitive is that the players know that from week to week, every practice is essentially functioning as a tryout. On the flip side of that, uh, it's been a challenge to figure out the most consistent first five. And so some of our timing has taken a little bit longer to develop. But I, uh, I'm really excited about the competitive atmosphere and practice every day. And as you know, that's the only way to get better. Well, you'll have a chance to for a little extra practice time this week preparing for Western Michigan. That game is not until next Saturday. Does the uh, off week come at a good time? There's no question. You know, we've got some sniffles and coughs, and so we'll get healthy this week. Our coaches will get out and recruit, and more importantly, we'll get some additional time to be in this gym working on our team, helping them get better. And so this is coming at the right time for us to make a push to finish Mac play. Danny, thanks so much for coming by. We'll see you next Saturday on the road in Kalamazoo. Thanks, Dave. Go Flashes.